Jamie Conn here for seconds out with Double M, Matthew Macklin in London, your call. Matthew, how are you doing, sir? Well, I was going to avoid you, but yeah, I could see you in Sully Hall, so <laughs> that, that wouldn't be very nice of me, so yeah. Anyway, my voice, I, I've got one of these powerful voices where people can talk and talk and talk, and I've got to commentate all day tomorrow, and my voice is already going. I'll try and keep it as short as possible. Before we look forward, I want to rewind slightly. A day that will live long in the memory for a lot of boxing fans. Look, a result that didn't go your way on the night, but a day nonetheless that you have, you have a bit of legacy to hold on to that you know sticks in the uh, minds of boxing fans. Yeah, look, f failure is part of success. You know, you don't. You've got to uh, maintain that enthusiasm and that self belief, uh, even when things haven't gone your way, and you, you're sitting there in an empty dressing room, or in my case, waking up in a hospital, and 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 and, and you know. You think, well, where do I go from here, or what? How am I going to be after this? And, but you look back now, and I think, no, I, it, it was possibly the making of me. I, I, that was a, I learned a lesson in that fight that I needed to learn. That was probably that I was prob that I hadn't been learning in wins, although I was making those mistakes. You know, I was coming out. The, I look back in the fights before that, and I sort of analyse them in hindsight. And the writing was on the wall. There, there were wins I had prior to that where I nearly ran out of steam. But I got them out of there. Had I not have got them out of there, I was going to run out of steam. And um, Jamie had learned that lesson earlier in his career with Scott Dixon and that loss. So, And he'd been in the fights in the trenches with Michael Jones. He'd been down, he'd been up. So his experience winning the fight, you know, he'd been there. He'd been through those situations. So, you know, you look at my chain, you know, there was a camera that went into my change room before the fight. And I looked like I'd already done 10 rounds. I would sweat pumping out of me and I was coming out of that. I'd come out like a train. I would come out in fifth gear. But Jamie was very calm and relaxed and warmed into the fight. And you know what I mean? Experience won in the fight. Um, but it was a great fight. Uh, people are still talking about it every year since. And that makes me proud. Not, not proud of my boxing performance, but proud of the, um, you know, the grit and, and the heart that I showed in the fight. As you definitely should be, and just keeping on the theme of reflection as well. Former trainer Joe Gallagher steps into the British Boxing Hall of Fame too. Just a word on Joe. Oh, well deserved. Um, a very driven, hardworking, obsessive individual. Um, I love training with Joe. Uh, he always, um, I got probably had my best performances with Joe. And he, uh, he was very good. At, uh, he created a lovely environment in the gym. Kind of this siege mentality us against the rest of the world. He always had a great playlist on as well. <laughs> Going through a couple of things. Uh, let's talk through the car. Look, talent after talent after talent. How's it important? Or what are these fighters each got to do to make sure that they're the one that's talked about when there's a lot of talent coming through on this card on Saturday night? Yeah, the, do you know what? I'm, every single fight on this card I'm looking forward to for different reasons. Um, Jamie DKV in with a big punching opponent. I'd imagine that fight's got knockout written all over it one way or the other. Top of the bill, you got Caroline Dubois, who's a rising star, uh, get, getting better every time. Um, and then, you know, you got Vidal, who's coming along nicely. Um, Callum Simpson. I'd imagine his short term goal is the British title, but he's got to get past his opponent on Saturday night. And he's a late, late replacement. So, you know, he's got to sort of cope with that. Uh, you know, Aaron McKenna, I, was, I think it's Stevie or Aaron, one of them on, on the under. Stevie. Stevie's on the card. You know, they, they bring intensity every time. They bring action every time. So you can't not enjoy watching them. Uh, and, you know, Francesca Hennessy, a pro debut. So there's, there's a bit of everything on the card. Um, and obviously every single individual on it will first of all be looking to win. But secondly, they'll want to steal the show. They'll want everybody going away from your call tomorrow night talking about them. Let's uh, quickly bring in a couple of other things uh, before I let you go. Oh, the way I want to attack this question, because I've heard different people ask you this question, but... Um, Sturman Martinez, albeit in different circumstances, back-to-back -back defeats for yourself in your career. Joyce is now facing the same sort of thing. Um, when you have those moments, what, what is needed to build a fighter back to get in a level of confidence to go again? And then also people are kind of questioning, is punch resistance, this is gone, that has gone, whatever. Fighters are always the last to know whether those bits are gone. When do you pick up on those things like, that's not as sharp as it used to be, this has gone, I'm not quite where I once was? Well, look, it's, it, you know, there's. You, you, you pointed out the similarities to back-to-back defeats, -back but there's quite a lot of differences as well. Like, um, you know, one was a, a split decision loss, which I felt was a robbery, and pretty much the whole global boxing community felt the same, uh, which then landed me the shot against Sergio Martinez, which was another 
loss, but where, one where my stock rose. It was a you know a nip and tuck fight right to the end, and Martinez was pound for pound just sitting behind Mayweather and Pacquiao at the time. I think he might even have been ring fighter of the year. I can't remember, but he was you know he was right up there as one of the stars in boxing. So it was a, a good loss, as in my stock rose in defeat. So. In those back-to-back -back defeats, you know, my confidence didn't really dwindle. If anything, it went went up. Um, you know, for Zhang, uh, for Joyce, sorry, he's he's lost two a good fighter, but in two heavy knockout defeats, stoppage and a bad knockout defeat, uh, and one of his sort of leading, um, one of his most visible attributes as a boxer was his ability to take a shot. You know. That doesn't mean he can't take a shot, by the way, because, you know, it was a shot that probably would have knocked out most people. But Joe, it's difficult to see where he goes from here because he's, he's not a spring chicken. He's pushing on in years. He's, he's had a lot of miles on the clock. Um, and in terms of being an opponent for one of the top guys to get him bounce out back up there, He's high risk, low rewards. You know, you know, you, you, you beat Joe now, and people say, "So what?" He just got knocked out by Zhang twice. He's, you know, you're not going to become mandatory challenger if you beat Joe. Like, I, I think it's going to be difficult for people. It's going to be difficult for whoever's behind Joe, Frank Warren, and his management team, to lure opponents into fighting him now. They, they, they got the Zhang rematch because, you know, I guess it was mandated. I guess that was sorry. I guess they already had a contract for that, but. You know, it's got, I think it's going to be difficult to get the opponent they need for Joe to get back up there to fight Joe because he's not bringing anything to the table now. So therefore, I think it's a longer, slower road back. And with given Joe's age, I'm, I don't know. He, he, I'm not sure if he'll, he'd have the appetite for that. Maybe he has. I don't know. Matt, final question because we've got to go. Uh, what's happening with Gennady Golovkin? He's having a fight. Is he retiring? I hope he retires. You know, he's the same age as myself. Um, Nothing left to prove. Very, very avoided man for a long, long time. Uh, got there in the end. You know, understood the business. Him and his promoter Tom Loeffler, they 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 stayed they stayed consistent. They stayed busy. Uh, boxing in Monaco, boxing in America, coming back to boxing Monaco. You know what I mean? They 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 took the short money to get people in the ring with them to get there, and eventually they got there and they got the money and they got the, the kudos and. At one point, he was regarded the best pound for pound fighter in the world when he was in his pump, and he was. And uh, uh, I'm glad I got to share, you know, I wasn't glad with my performance, but I was glad I got to share the ring with a modern day great. I appreciate it, William. Thanks for your seconds out. Cheers.